So we're setting up the antacid analysis lab. You're gonna come over, you're gonna have your reagents such as your antacid already pulverized and the name is gonna be on there. You wanna make sure you write the name. Also, you're gonna have your solutions, your HCl and your sodium hydroxide. You wanna look on the bottle and that is where you wanna write your concentrations, your molarities down on your report sheet. In terms of your pipette bulb and your pipette, the drawers are labeled pipette bulb and pipette in which you will obtain those. Also, you're gonna come over and you have the other drawers which are labeled your gas lighters and your Bunsen burner hoses and you wanna basically set that up. So I'm gonna take you through the actual setup for the lab. You're gonna obtain one of the burette holders. You're gonna get a ring stand. The ring stands are at the bottom under the balances. You're gonna tighten up that burette holder and you're gonna obtain your burette from the shelf, which is shelf I. After you do that, you just pinch the sides and you want to set it up and you want to close the stopcock so that once you finally set it up, nothing comes out. You should go and weigh your antacid, your unknown antacid or your antacid that you have gotten that has already been pulverized. You wanna take that and put it inside of your Erlenmeyer flask. Then the directions tell you to pipette 25 milliliters of hydrochloric acid of ACL. So you are taking your pipette bulb and your pipette. You're going to take, press the A, squeeze it, and then squeeze the bulb so that the air can come out. You're gonna take the bottom and place it on the top of the pipette. The pipette is a 25 milliliter pipette. Here you see the indication or the marking that tells you when it's at 25. So you want the meniscus to be there, okay? You wanna take your acid, your hydrochloric acid, making sure you guys read the bottle. And you have an S for suck, an E for expel. So you're gonna stick the tip in and you're gonna press the S so that you suck the liquid up. If you'll notice, the liquid is going inside of the pipette. And again, you wanna make sure you get the meniscus right where that tick mark or that graduated mark is. It's okay if you go over because you can press the E to bring some of it out until you get your desired volume to that tick mark. Afterwards, you're gonna take and you're gonna put that acid inside of your Erlenmeyer flask. You can either press the E to get it to come out or you can remove the top of the, uh, the top from the pipette, the bulb, and it'll just go out via gravity. Once it stops draining out, then you have delivered your 25 milliliters into your flask. Afterwards, you're asked to swirl that flask so that you can get your antacid to dissolve. After it has dissolved, you're asked to put in four to eight drops of the bromophenol but before you put in the bromophenol blue you're asked to heat up the antacid with the acid to see if you will notice a color change so what we're going to do is go ahead and light the bunsen burner so again we're going to light the bunsen burner you're going to turn the gas knob down you're going to hear or you're going to smell gas you're gonna take your striker, and you should only have to strike once, and you're gonna light your Bunsen burner. You want to adjust your flame 
by turning the knob on the bottom. And you'll notice you see your cones so that you can see the cool and the hot zones. You're gonna take and you're gonna gently grab the Erlenmeyer flask and you wanna gently swirl it around. You wanna heat for about a minute And again, constantly swirling so that you are removing the carbon dioxide from your solution. And again, you wanna just approximately do this for a minute. If you don't feel comfortable using a Bunsen burner or holding the flask with the tongs, then you could also use a hot plate and just sit it on a hot plate to wait for it. Because the bottom is hot, you may want to get a wire gauze and you have a drawer that is labeled wire gauze. So that after you have finished swirling, you can just sit it right on top of that wire gauze. So once you're finished with the Bunsen burner, you want to turn it off and you want to move it out of your way. You notice that we have our gentle boil, okay? So the directions tell us after we have heated for that one minute to remove the dissolved carbon dioxide, again, you want to just keep gently swirling and you want to add your four to eight drops. So if you want to add four, add four. If you want to add five, add five, six, six, eight, seven, however many but long as it's between four and eight. So I'm going to add one, two, three, four drops. And I'm going to give that a swirl. And what you will notice is that my solution turned yellow. So then you want to go back to the directions and it tells you that you're going to add the indicator if the solution is blue pipette an additional 10 milliliters of acid and you want to repeat as often as needed but ours didn't turn blue it is yellow so we are fine so you want to allow this to cool for a few minutes so that it is roughly at about room temperature and then we want to prepare our burette by using sodium hydroxide the directions tell you in terms of rinsing how to. So I'm going to show you how to fill the burette. You're going to take a funnel and you're going to put the funnel at the top. And remember I told you to close the stopcock so it doesn't drip out. And you want to just pour in your sodium hydroxide. Again, you do not have to fill it all the way to zero you notice that i stopped somewhere and you would read it by looking again at the meniscus the same way that we did for the graduated cylinder when y'all did the molarity calculations okay So after we have let our solution cool, they tell us to go ahead and begin the titration. You wanna again, make sure you watch to make sure you don't have any bubbles. You'll notice that I do have bubbles at the bottom and they tell you to remove those bubbles if needed, if you have them. So when we do our titration, again, you're coming back to read the directions and they tell us that at our end point, we should have a faint blue color. So we're going to start our titration. First, I would read the burette and record my initial volume. Remember that it starts at zero and if you come to the bottom, it ends at 50. You do have this space where you do not have any graduations. So you have to make sure you carefully watch that you don't come into this area because you will have to repeat that titration. So we want to just gently turn and swirl 
until we get a faint blue color. So you notice that I stopped it because it started to turn blue and you may want to put it on white paper so that you could see the actual blue color. So hopefully you guys can see the faint blue. You don't want to get it a dark blue because then you would be overshooting your endpoint and your calculations would be off. And you want to repeat this two more times so that you can complete all of your trials. 